Did you know Super Awesome Mix has an app? Go to the Apple App Store today and download Super Awesome Mix. It's free. You could start creating and sending your own digital mixtapes in just a few clicks. Also, there's links to our Instagram account and a link where you can follow your favorite podcast. Speaking of which... Welcome back to another Super Awesome Mix. My name is Matt Sidholm, alongside my co-host and co-founder of Super Awesome Mix, Samer Abusabi. Samer, how are we doing this week? You know, doing real well. It's my favorite time of year, and that's because it's my birthday. <laughs> if we had more special effects, we could start playing like a birthday song or something right now. But, you know, we don't. Um, right. But, but happy birthday. Thank you. We'd also probably have to pay a lot of royalties to some random family somewhere for playing the happy birthday song. So oh, right. yeah. <laughs> that would be, that'd be no good. Um, yes. Thank you so much. You know, I was thinking like, what would I want from, from our lovely podcast listeners for my birthday? And I was like, you know what we do need? We have like thousands of listeners and only 33 reviews on, on Apple podcasts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so wow. Yeah. If you are listening. If you are listening, just go ahead and, and tap a little five star. You don't even have to write anything. Just tap that five star. That would be awesome. That was, that's what yeah, I want that, for my birthday. That um, takes no time. Be great. And it would mean so much to Samer uh, on his birthday. It would. So, yeah. So let's see I what mean, we can do there. I need a... Let's see what we can do there. Um, and maybe yeah. every uptick in, um, if we get a bunch of reviews, maybe we'll make like a donation or something like that. Yeah. That, that's what we'll do. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Right to my bank account. No, I mean, right. you know, wait, to something wait a else. minute. God, Samer. That was, <laughs> that was, you know, we talk about inside voice and the external voice, right? Like that uh, was definitely an internal right. voice comment. Yeah. I said, I said the quiet part loud. You're That's right. right. You're right. That's right. Um, no, let's get, a yeah. cu- let's get a bunch of reviews, a bunch of five stars and help people find the show. And uh, maybe we could do something uh, good for for some charity out there. So so yeah, let's figure that out, listeners. Let's get after it and see what what kind of results we get. I like it, but yeah. So this is great because um, you know just like we did last year, uh, it's time for a birthday mix. So Matt gets one later this year. I get one in February, and it's always really exciting. Um, and this year, I decided to make a mix of songs that whenever I first heard them. I just played them like hundreds of times. So if if you're like me every now and then you'll hear a song and just something about it, you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot not listen to this song. And you just have it on repeat. And so these are 12 songs. And funny enough, <laughs> I realized there's like a chunk of these where they start to get into really like existential crisis areas. And I <laughs> have to wonder like, am I okay? But we'll talk about them. We'll talk about them. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk through that. We'll talk through that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so because it's your birthday mix, you picked every song. And so I will introduce every song. And um, so, yeah, so anybody who's alarmed by the, uh, the, the, different, the different format, just want to get out ahead of that. So, so let's get into it. I'm excited about this one. I really enjoyed it. Your first pick was Sons and Daughters by the Decemberists. Yeah, I don't think that I've been able to put a December song yet on a mix, um, or maybe I haven't tried hard enough, but I was like, I have to put the December on. People need to know that I listen to them because I love them. <laughs> I think one time, many, many years ago, they were a guest band on uh, the Stephen Colbert show whenever he was still doing that like kind of parody show. Um and he called them the the hyper literate uh, band, which is great because they, yeah, lyrically they they have very advanced uh, <laughs> like lyrics and use of language and stuff. This one's a little bit simpler. Um, I just love the way that this song sounds. I, I especially love the outro um, where he just keeps singing, "Hear all the bombs fade away, hear all the bombs fade away." So it ends on a much more hopeful note. And like many of these, I'd never really paid attention to the lyrics until this episode. <laughs> and this is apparently like a bunch of people like living in this like presumably post-apocalyptic world and that's why he said like you know we'll build walls of aluminum and put cinnamon in our mouths i guess that was like a a belief that cinnamon in your mouth would help with radiation poisoning i'm pretty sure that it does nothing <laughs> for stopping radiation poisoning but i don't you know. know that sounds like sound science i don't i don't want to argue with that <laughs> you're right yeah <laughs> but maybe don't try that at home um <laughs> 
but yeah, I had no idea that that's what this song was about. But all I really ever cared about and why I kept listening to it is truly that that outro of just this feeling of like, here all the bombs fade away and, and how he sings it. And I always just love that. So top of the mix here is is this song. Um, I really enjoyed this one, and I thought I'd heard it before, and I finally figured out where I had heard it before. Um, there was an episode of The Office where mm-hmm. they kind of focus on Shroot Farms, and and actually, you know, a lot of people may not know, but there was there was slated to be a spinoff show called Shroot Farms that just focused on Dwight and like the workings of this farm, but it never really got off the ground. So there's a couple episodes that really like drill in a little bit more about what goes on at the farm. But at the end of one of those episodes, they showed Dwight and his family like playing this song. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's, I, I finally made that connection of why it sounded familiar, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a great song. I really enjoy it. And um, yeah, it just brought back some good, good memories of a great episode of the office. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you remembered that that it was in the office. Great episode. <laughs> All right, now your next pick, and I hope I get all of this title correct, but this is Wraith Pin to the Mist and Other Games by Of Montreal. Yeah, I recently posted a reel on Instagram of like how difficult it is to talk to smart speakers whenever there's a title like this, because you're like, you have to remember every word to get the song to play. And if you miss even one, it's like, I don't understand. Or it ends up playing some random song that has a similar title. (laughs) It's so difficult. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's things like that that make me not panic about artificial intelligence. Exactly, right? <laughs> like when people are like, look, if they get the ability to think, like we're dead, like it's going to be the Terminator, right? And I'm like, yeah, or I can eat a banana while talking to it and the machine can explode, <laughs> right? right? Exactly. <laughs> so, so how advanced is this technology? <laughs> Oh, gosh. You know, I'm just going to bring up not to go on too far of a thing, but like in in the movie RoboCop, right? Like in that first that first prototype where the thing falls down some stairs, like they developed a super robot, you know, and then it reaches some stairs and it can't figure it out and it falls down. That's how I feel about a lot of AI. Like you you put the smallest roadblock in front of it, it just (laughs) falls over. Uh, Anyway, anyway, um, this song is you know it's from 2005 it reminds me of a time um i think i was yeah i was in college around this time absolutely obsessed with it whenever it first came out it sounded like nothing i had really listened to before why i love this song and why i still listen to it a lot is i just love him singing let's pretend we don't exist let's pretend we're in antarctica and sometimes i just i have that mood and i think especially as i get older you know and and the world seems to get crazier there's definitely moments where it's like i just want to pretend i don't exist for a little bit like and leave to like antarctica where you're like not surrounded by basically any humans at all you're just kind of separated from from the world as you know it um and so i really like that for the song it's like an escapist song for me but i just think this song is like so kind of happy and peculiar and, and his voice kind of floats above the track somehow it's like really interesting how it's mixed it has a very like airy feel to it um but i also really like it because the third verse which i think is also you know very birthday appropriate is maybe i'll die i'll just maybe i'll never die I'll just keep growing younger with you and you'll grow younger too. Now it seems too lovely to be true, but I know the best things always do. And so I realized that a lot of these songs have like lyrics and and verses in them that relate to age and and youthfulness and stuff. So this was perfect for that because, you know, as you get older, I I like to believe that that youth can be held on to mentally, at least, even if our bodies start to get a little bit older, we never really have to feel old if, if we can help it. So I really like this line and this song. Yeah, I I agree with that sentiment that like, yeah, as you as you get older, it really just comes down to like, what is your mindset? Like you can get really bummed out about turning whatever age you're turning, or you could just kind of be like, all right, well, you know, it's yesterday, I was pretty much the same person I am today. Right. So right. I don't have to get that <laughs> bummed out about, you know, the number next to my name getting, uh, getting a little bit bigger. So totally agree. Um, yeah, I wrote down the same thing. Like, this is such a happy song. Like, I really, I really enjoyed it. I was not familiar with these guys. They had a real Talking Heads kind of vibe to them, at least in mm. this song. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to really kind of digging in more of their catalog and see, see what else they have. Nice. So yeah, excited about that. Um, all right, your next pick. You've got Yoshimi battles the Pink Robot Part One by the flaming lips 
Yeah, this is another one that you got to remember every part um, to get the song to play. This is definitely another peculiar song. Um, I love the Flaming Lips. I saw them live actually at ACL way back. Uh, I'm going to date myself here, as sometimes you often do, when ACL was only one weekend. And, <laughs> oh, and it was wow. not. I know. Yeah, way back. Um, and they put on an amazing show. Like it was so over the top and, you know, definitely really solid entertainers. But I like this song a lot. Um, you know, I like this idea of Yoshimi being cheered on as she battles these evil robots. There's a lot of like discussion on the Internet. Are the evil robots representative of cancer? Is she battling cancer? Is this a real person or not? It's kind of unclear. But either way, I just like this idea of, you know, someone cheering you on as you as you battle whatever represents your evil robots in your life. Um, and the, and Yoshimi is certainly going to win because she's got a black belt in karate, as the opening line says. So just an, <laughs> another like peculiar song that, again, sounded like nothing else that I was listening to at the time. And so I was like, what is this? I just want to keep playing it over and over again. And I got really into the Flaming Lips for a while as a result. Yeah, I have some friends who are huge Flaming Lips fans, and they they rave about the live show just being crazy. Nice. Um, and in a good way, right? Yeah. And um, this I, I love just because it's part of kind of a concept album, and I love kind of the modern day concept album where they kind of have a through line like this. But what I found so unique about it is it sounds like just this very, if you're not paying attention to the lyrics, it just sounds like a very sweet love song almost. Mm-hmm. And yet they're talking about, you know, this battle against robots, right? <laughs> Whatever yeah. symbolism that might be, if you then just kind of switch your ears to listening to the lyrics, you're like, huh, this does not, it doesn't quite match up. But I, I think it does make it interesting. I, I enjoyed the song for sure. I want I want to get into this whole album and see how the uh, how the battle maybe resolves itself. At least I hope it does. Right. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> All right, track four, you've got Sweet Disposition by The Temper Trap. All right, so yeah, this song um, came into my life because uh, 500 Days of Summer, it was popularized certainly by that film, but then I started listening to this album actually start to finish over and over and over again, and I find myself on days where I kind of just want like a comfort album, you know, like an album that brings me back and it's easy for me to just hit play on and not worry about music for the next 45 minutes or so. Um, this is one of those albums because I think it's just an expertly done album start to finish. Um, but yeah, like this, you know, I think the opening riffs here are are really what draw you in. Um, and the way he holds that line, sweet disposition, um, it's just incredible. Like I, his voice is beautiful. I think the whole song has this kind of like youthful energy to it. You know, the chorus where or right before the chorus where he's singing like a moment, a love, a dream aloud, a kiss, a cry, our rights, our wrongs. Um it really kind of encapsulates this feeling of of what it is to be like youthful and be running around and you know you have all of these things going on and everything is new and exciting and and uh, a rush and i think that this song does a really good job of kind of putting all those together into into a single song to kind of capture what it's like to be young and so i i realized starting here and for the next several tracks i was like wow i, I accidentally picked a lot of songs having to do <laughs> with wanting to go back to your youth so maybe i need to <laughs> Maybe I need to check in with myself here. <laughs> I did notice that after like, I don't know, it's probably track seven or eight. I think one of my notes is like, yeah, this one is just, yeah, there's just kind of a running theme here. And that's not a bad thing. It's your birthday. It's kind of natural to reflect on that. But for sure, uh, I agree. This was this might have been my favorite song on this mix. Um, and you're right. The opening riff just draws you in. It's in this category of songs, and I'll have to see if I can make a mix out of this. But, you know, these are this is a song that kind of got me fired up. Like, I, I loved kind of the buildup in this one. But mm -hmm. because of the high register of the lead singer's voice, like, I could never really sing along to this one. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of a unique category of songs of like, <laughs> you, know, you can't really replicate this or even try to. Um, but yeah, no, this is, this is great. And I, I think it, it's a perfect song, like just rhythmically, if you're trying to like really focus and get a lot of work done, I feel like this song would be awesome for that. Yeah. I think the whole album is really good at that. And I think that's part of why I come back to it a lot. Um, it's one of those albums where like, if you want to pay attention to it, you can. And if you don't, you don't have to. And either way, like, I think you'll really enjoy it. Nice. All right. Track five, you've got Fast Talk by Dan Golden and houses yeah 
it might be Don Golden, but um, oh, sorry. yeah, like this is um, this is a track that was introduced to me much later in my life, like in the last like four or five years. But I instantly got hooked, and I still come back to the song and listen to it uh, on repeat. You know, again, um, I love this entire song for basically the one line where I, you know, like what the song is about, where he sings, and maybe God is just a cop that we can fast talk. And I love that because you know there's like this theme here that he's thinking about where you know maybe death is not maybe death is like something you can bargain against maybe maybe like you can hold on to your youth uh you know the also the line what if death is just another pair of handcuffs i interpret that to mean like handcuffs are are temporary like they they aren't like something that you have you know ostensibly for on for the rest of your life it's like something that restrains you for a little bit and then you're released from them um so maybe death is just like that maybe it's just like a temporary little restraint and then you come back in in whatever form and so i just kind of like this song a lot and i like the idea that like death can be cheated a little bit longer you can always find life in something new and and keep experiencing things so um but yeah i also think again this just has this kind of like a whimsical feel to it um and and it's easy to kind of get lost in, in how this song sounds sonically yeah, this is a this is a really cool song. And about the two and a half minute mark, they kind of insert what sounds like a a phone conversation uh, between the lead singer and presumably like a friend, right? Where he's yeah. like, "I'm 32. I feel half completely alive and half completely dead." And so, you know, that's even more explicit than even reading into the lyrics, right? Where he's kind right. of thinking about his own mortality and all that. So. Um, but you're right. I I love the lyrics in this one, like that that line. You know, maybe God is just a cop. We can fast talk. I'm like, this is this is really good. And there's a there's a lot of other great lyrics in this one, uh, along those same lines. So yeah, really good pick. Um, all right, track six, halfway mark. We've got all my friends by LCD Sound System. Yeah, and this is uh, these two songs kind of got introduced to me at the same time um, by the same person, and so. I fell in love with this song. Like LCD Sound System is definitely in a, in a group of bands that I've never sat down and like listened to their music. I have yet to sit down and listen to like an album of theirs start to finish, but I've seemed to be like slowly discovering them over my life. Um, and every time I hear a song from there, I'm like, oh my God, I love that song. So I don't know why I haven't just like sat down and listened to them. <laughs> um, but I do that with a number of bands and this is certainly one of them. But I, you know, A, the piano in this song is so frantic. Like I, if you just listen to what he's doing on the piano, you're like, that is amazing. His fingers must be moving a thousand miles per hour to, to do that. Um, you know, be uh, someone even pointed out, like to play that live is really challenging because at least like in a, in a studio, you can kind of loop it. But if you're playing it live the whole way through, that's like several, you know, four minutes of just like mashing the keyboard, um, which is incredible. But yeah, there's definitely another theme of age here, you know, and I love the line where he sings, you spent the first five years trying to get with the plan and the next five years trying to be with your friends again. And I think that that's so apt, you know, like we we kind of, I was certainly in a rush to grow up for a big chunk of my life, especially in my 20s. You're like, oh, I've got to, there's a whole thing I got to do. There's a checklist I got to work through. Um, and then you kind of reach an age where you're like, wait, no, I <laughs> send me back. Like, I, I don't like any of this. I just want to be hanging out with my friends again and enjoying things. So um, I really like that the aspect of this song of like, yes, your plans are important and, and, you know, doing things that mean that matter to you are important. But I think it's also important to like be surrounded by friends and family and then spend that time with them and, and just hang out. And so, yeah, in, in the outro, wherever he just keeps singing, like, where are your friends tonight? And if I could see all my friends tonight think is this longing to like go back to that uh part of his life so definitely again kind of kind of existential crises coming through here but i'm, I'm good i'm all right <laughs> well yeah i the the piano part stood out to me too because i was like this is so fast but it wasn't so fast that it couldn't be played like live but it would just mm -hmm. be someone who had to be really good i totally agree with that assessment um, but yeah, I love the lyrics here. So many great lines. The lyric I called out was, I wouldn't trade one stupid decision for another five years of life. You know, so thinking back of all the kind of dumb things that you do that, you know, might be a little risky or, or whatnot, but like, you know, you probably wouldn't trade that moment with your friends or, or whatever for, you know, just some extra time there at the end of it, you know? I love um, that. Yeah, that's yeah. a great line. So that was, a, I don't know, this was a great one. And yeah, I love just the focus on on friendships and, and kind of all the things that, because you do kind of fall 
uh, you know, you lose touch with people sometimes, and then you reconnect with them and you realize how much they meant to you. And then you lose touch with them again. Like that stuff just happens right. as you get older. Um, but yeah, great, great pick. All right, track seven. You've got Anthems for a 17-Year-Old Girl by Broken Social Scene. Yeah, another song that, again, whenever I first heard it, it sounded like nothing else I was listening to at the time. So I ended up just playing it over and over again because I was so obsessed with it. Um, and it and funny enough, this is this is whenever, as I was working on the notes for this episode, I was like, huh, there's definitely a theme here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because this is a, another look back at youth uh, and how we act when we're young. And, you know, like I think she is singing to her past self um, where she's saying, like, used to be one of the rotten ones. And I liked you for that. Um, and then now you're all gone. You got your makeup on and you're not coming back. Can't you come back? And so I think she's like really looking back at her her youthful self, her 17 year old self, presumably, and, and thinking about all the things that she was, you know, her life was ahead of her. She was maybe making dumb decisions. And that's why she's one of the rotten ones, you know, um, like she stood out from the rest. She was kind of an outcast, whereas now it's like you got your makeup on, you're maybe conforming or, you know, maybe that's like the interpretation there. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, can't you come back? Like you kind of, I, I certainly reflect on, on my teenage self as I think a lot of people do of like, wow, like you did kind of just make some reckless decisions sometimes and, and it worked <laughs> out like, <laughs> you know, obviously hopefully nothing too unsafe, but I think we're more free to kind of like make decisions that, that maybe as we get older, we're like, oh no, we definitely can't do that. So, um, I think there's, you know, there's a quality to, to being young that, that helps a lot. You have that like beginner's mind and, and you're unafraid to kind of take risks. So that's why I'm really drawn to this song now that I, you know, experiencing as a, as a much older person than whenever I first heard it. Yeah, I really like that. And, and you're, you're exactly right. There is something about being, being young and, and having maybe just less responsibilities around you that allow you to kind of make some more rash decisions and, and sometimes they, uh, they work out in your favor, at least uh, hopefully they do in the long run. But, um, yeah. but yeah, this one's great. I noticed like, this was when it struck me that a lot of these songs have kind of repetitive lyrics on them, right? Like just a couple lines repeated over and over. Is there something about that style that kind of appeals to you in some way? I had never thought about that, but you're kind of like blowing my mind. You're right. Like a lot of my, a lot of my music that I like have things that are repeated. Maybe it's because it's like a mantra or something. I, mean, I really like, you know, it's like a meditative thing. You just keep hearing the same mm -hmm. thing over and over again. That's yeah, really interesting. I, I don't say it as a bad thing, right? No, it's no. Just, it's yeah. just a pattern. I noticed that in a lot of these songs, they, they focus in on a couple lines and they kind of run through those and so i just didn't know if it was something about that yeah maybe it, it does give a meditative kind of quality to the song so i can mm -hmm. understand why you would listen to these over and over again i like that that's really yeah. cool uh all right track eight you've got destiny by zero seven sia and sophie barker yeah, this is um, an atmospheric song that I'm just absolutely obsessed with and introduced to me by, um, I believe it was the Garden State soundtrack. So I think this made an appearance in, in the movie Garden State, which, as we've talked about before, just had an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. Like, what what a great album for movies. Um, but yeah, it's like a song about dealing with loneliness and, and kind of being away from someone you care about. Um, Feature C has just absolutely gorgeous voice, you know, um, I think it's it's like a beautiful sentiment for for like drawing strength from people that are around you in your life. And I think that's again, I, I was trying to now apply meaning to songs that I picked um, truly kind of haphazardly of just like, oh, I listen to this all the time. Let me put this on the mix. Um, but finding a theme among them. And I think as you get older, you definitely reflect more on the kind of the people you care about in your life and, and the support you get from them. So I really love the line, you know where she sings when I'm weak, I draw strength from you. And when you're lost, I know how to change your mood. Um, and when I'm down, you breathe life over me. Um, and so I just really like that. Like, hopefully you have someone in your life, even if it's like your pet, you know, like it doesn't matter, but just someone who kind of supports you <laughs> and gives you, gives you that feeling of life and, and, and support. So I really like that song a lot from that regard, but sonically it's just a really cool kind of laid back sound too. That's what struck me the most. Yeah, that's what I kind of wrote down. I was like, I love the mood of this song and kind of the mm -hmm. mood that you're in. It's it's not too fast, but it's not too slow. Like it's a great just kind of laid back feel. So I feel like if you're kind of in a in a heightened state, this might be a good one to kind of draw you back in and calm you down. Totally. All right. Track nine. You've got Ribs by Lord. 
Yes. My first note here was yet another song about getting old. (laughs) (laughs) This one's much more straightforward, I feel like. Yes. Oh gosh, um, I love like the speed of this song and how it kind of like it seems it kind of changes or seems to change and and like sometimes for me that's like you know maybe she's she's speaking about how sometimes life goes really fast sometimes it goes really slow, um, you know. But again, like as you said, it's much clearer here because she just constantly says the line like it drives you crazy getting old, um, you know. And I love this the second chorus where she's singing this dream isn't feeling sweet we're reeling through the midnight streets and i've never felt more alone it feels so scary getting old um and i think sometimes yeah there is like you know there can be a negative fear associated with with getting old like you you feel like time is running out and you can kind of like stack the cards against you with that those kind of feelings um and i definitely don't want to diminish that because i think that's very real but i always try to bring myself back of like okay if there is a sense of urgency then make sure i'm doing work i care about make sure i'm spending time with the people i care about and try to flip it back to this like positive um kind of approach to it rather than rather than feeling crushed by it uh, cuz i think it can be very it can be scary to get old and, and kind of feel that um so I but I just love Lord. Uh, I think she's so talented. Her music is so good, and this album in particular was one of my favorites. I think it is my favorite from her, uh, just start to finish. Has so many incredible tracks on it, um, and this is one I had yet to talk about. So wanted to put this on the mix. Yeah, her her voice is incredible. Like I totally agree with that. But but yeah, you're right. I think the this act can act as a good reminder of like, hey, you know, value kind of the you know what what you have in front of you. Right. And don't just get bogged down with kind of, I don't know, looking back or, or, you know, maybe looking too far ahead. Right. And worrying about right. that. So, um, yeah, good pick. Good pick. Um, all right. Now, this one's not as, uh, you know, um, rueful for younger days, if you will. Uh, track 10, you've got Lovely Day by Alt J. Yeah, this one breaks the the mold a little bit from from the previous uh, five or six. But it's it's again it's like every time we were going to do like a cover um mix i wanted to put this on there but then for some reason it didn't work and so i was like i gotta finally tell people i love this song and so it's it's a cover of lovely day by bill withers who i love bill withers he's like so talented um and has amazing amazing songs and i just think like this is such a cool cover for it you know we talk a lot about covers sometimes it's like why do they exist because it's like it's basically the exact same song i think this is a really different take on this song um while still holding all the lyrics and still kind of like you know being being the bill withers song um they definitely applied that like alt j weirdness to it uh that they that they tend to bring to a lot of their music so yeah it was a hidden track off of off of this album um I just, again, I love the original song, but I just really like what Alt-J did with it. And so anytime I kind of want this, you know, again, this would fall in line with some of the the more kind of airy tracks on on this uh, mix. Um, it goes really well with those. And so that's why I wanted to put this on here. Yeah, when I saw the title, of course, I immediately thought of the Bill Withers song. But then when it starts, I'm like, oh, maybe this isn't a cover song, you know, maybe this right. is just kind of same, same title and, and different song, but then, you know, they get into the lyrics and it clearly is a cover song. So I, I love it when, you know, artists just take, like really make a unique cover. And like you said, don't just kind of, you know, play karaoke and just sing the song that, you know, right. right? <laughs> With their <laughs> own instruments. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which is like, all right, I'd still like that song. Like I wouldn't mind hearing someone do Bill Withers' Lovely Day. It's a great song. But um, yeah, I can really appreciate just the the unique spin on it, and uh, and this is as we've talked about Bill Withers on the show before. It's just it's just an outstanding song. So, mm-hmm. all right, track eleven. You have another super awesome mix favorite here. You've got Church by Macklemore and Experience. Yeah, this is um this is like a dark horse pick off of this album. It's it's interesting. Uh, there's so many other bigger songs off of this album, Gemini. But whenever I would play it play that album i kept coming back to this one over and over and over again and it's two things it's it's mostly it's one i love like lyrically you know it's he's reflecting back on his life i i love that he thinks like his greatest achievement is his daughter and i think for a lot of parents like they feel that like that's that's kind of the magic of of having a child is like oh my gosh i literally created like a a tiny human (laughs) that has my genes like it's pretty wild um And so I I love that, you know, he's he talks a lot about reflecting on on his career and and his own personal life and everything that he's done. But 
I just love the outro where, um, you know, they have this clip and, and he's singing or he's talking like, I can have a life too. I have life today. Uh, you know, I rely on that constant communication with my higher power. And he has this whole like paragraph here that he's talking about. And there's just something about how it's delivered and, and, and part of the song. And this is on the later part of the album that I don't know. I, I connect with that so deeply because um, as I've gotten older, I've, I've certainly become a little bit more spiritual and, and kind of rely on on this belief of something greater than me, whatever it is. Like I, I can't define it and, and I don't attempt to, but uh, I just do like to believe personally that there's something a little bit more that I don't understand. And so I, I like this element of that song and, and the way he describes that where it's like, you know, he has these thoughts and then things appear and, and that gets into kind of this like idea of manifestation and like you attract things that you think about and and all the kind of stuff that I've become really interested in as I've gotten older. So I just think it's a beautiful song. Um, and certainly, you know, like if you haven't gone all the way through on the Gemini album and, and made it to this track, uh, give it a listen because I think you'll really like it. It's, it's very different than some of his other stuff. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, the lyrics are still like, he still brings it, you know, when it comes to the lyrics and it's still really well written, like so many of others, his other tracks. Um, but yeah, this album had so many, like you said, so many big hits. And then, then you have this near the end. And so it's, it's a little different, but I think in a really cool way. So, um, I would say that's a, that's a big plus there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just a great track. Like I said, like, I don't know what, at what point, at what episode we got to on Super Awesome Mix where I just declared like Macklemore is kind of part of my regular rotation now, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just keep discovering stuff from them and it's always good. So, um, yeah, just add this one to the list. All right. Last pick track 12. You've got knock yourself out by John Bryan. Yeah, this is like probably the ultimate existential song uh, to cap out this whole mix <laughs> because um, it was featured on the I Heart Huckabees soundtrack, which this is the movie that um, I think I loved the trailer and I loved the soundtrack way more than I loved the movie itself. <laughs> like, unfortunately, it was just there's definitely a category of movies that fall into that, right? Um, where <laughs> the best part about it is like the trailer and the soundtrack. Fair. But then you watch the whole thing and you're like, oh, like that wasn't as good as I, I wanted it to be. Well, kind of an existential um, movie, right? Like they kind of try to make right. it a lot deeper than, than right. it needs to be. Yeah. 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 It, it does try really hard, um, which is unfortunate because I think it could have, the cast is incredible. So I feel like they could have done something really <laughs> knocked out of the park with it. Um but yeah, like I, you know, I, I got introduced to to this song because of the movie and the trailer and stuff. And I just I love the lyrics. It's literally a song dealing about existentialism and, and like you're constantly questioning yourself. Um, but I like it because it's kind of funny. It's like and if you, you know, as the lyrics say, like if you want to spend all your time wondering what it's all about, like knock yourself out. Um, you know, it's like, go for it. Sure. Do that. <laughs> and so I really like that element because there's definitely moments in my life where I do kind of sit and ponder it all, but, um, I have yet to reach any conclusions. I, I can't share any insights about, <laughs> about it. It's, it has not been a fruitful, uh, practice, but yeah, I just love John Bryan's music. I mean, he's done so many compositions and, and so many tracks for a lot of, uh, big movies, including like Magnolia and, and a number of others and eternal sunshine and spotless mind is incredible. So this is just yet another one that I love from him. Yeah. And this one too, I mean, it's only like a two minute long song and it's got a really fun music video with it too. So you've got John Bryan, Jason Schwartzman and Mark Wahlberg just, being really ridiculous and very uh he's being very un Mark Wahlberg like so um yeah kind of definitely a fun uh fun thing to check out there too but um great song to round out the mix uh no big insights this year but I mean Sam where you've got a whole year to maybe kind of figure some things out for next year's birthday mix right yeah you're right I uh I will start <laughs> meditating on it <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for putting this one together. There you go, folks. Another super awesome mix for your collection. This time, Samra's birthday mix. These were songs that the first time he heard them, he listened to them just thousands of times. Couldn't stop listening to them. So let us know at Super Awesome Mix. Okay, let us know which of these tracks became your new obsession once you listen to the mix and check out the episode. Also, like we said at the top of the show, leave us some reviews. Let's get those review numbers up. And if we get it to a number where we wouldn't be embarrassed telling a charity we're donating on because of this, um, yeah, we'll, we'll make a nice donation to, to a charity of uh, Samra's Choice. 
Um, and in the meantime, Sam has got a year to work on another birthday mix, but he and I have plenty of other mixes to work on. So for Samer, this is Matt. Thank you. Super Awesome Mix is brought to you by DLM. Make shopping easy with DLM, the one-stop shop for all your casual clothing needs. Shop dlmsupplycode.com and enter the promo code AWESOME at checkout to save 15% off your first purchase. That's dlmsupplycode.com.